So next, let's talk about section 13.3, which talks about arc length and speed. We're going to start with the definition given on page 756 of our book. It says, assume r of t is differentiable and r prime of t is continuous on a, b. Then the length l of a path, r of t, for t between a and b is equal to L is the length of path is given by the integral from t equals a to b of the magnitude of r prime of t dt, which is equal to an integral from a to b of the square root of the derivative of the first component function squared plus the second component function squared plus derivative of the third component function squared. Blah! What does all this stuff mean, right? Let's do a couple of quick reviews of some things. So recall, we just said from our previous discussion that r prime of t is the derivative of our function, and it can be thought of as a velocity function. And these straight brackets are called the magnitude of the velocity vector. And what is magnitude? Magnitude is just the length of the vector. And how do we compute the length of a vector? This is something that we know from two dimensions that might be nice to review for three dimensions as well. What is the length of a vector? Well, in two space, a vector has an x component and a y component. And so if I wanted to find the length of this, I would just have to use Pythagorean theorem. And I would know that, let's say that this is x of t, y of t is the name of this vector valued function. So the magnitude of this is going to be the square root of my x components, which is x of t squared plus y of t squared. But if I'm not talking about a two-dimensional vector, if I have a three-dimensional vector, then it doesn't, it, in addition to having an x component and a y component, here's my picture, it has an x direction, it has a y direction, and it also has a z direction. So let's say that I have a point in three space. This is the tip of my vector. This is the origin. And I know that the length of this vector is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. But let's look in a little more detail. That's what magnitude is generally. What's the magnitude in this specific case? So in this specific case, we're talking about a very particular vector. We're talking about the vector, the magnitude of r prime of t. And recall that because r prime of t is our velocity vector, the magnitude of r prime of t is going to be the speed of a particle when we're thinking of our r of t as the position of the particle. So we have some vector valued function that's tracing out some space curve and we have a whole bunch of vectors. So this is my vector r of t and the collection of vectors is what makes up my function. So as I, as t moves along, my little particle travels through space. And what am I trying to measure? Arc length is measuring what is the length of this path. So if I want to know what is the length of the path of the particle that's traveled, here is where t is equal to a, and I travel along all the way until ah, t is equal to b. And so arc length is measuring how long is the path From, a, from when t equals a to t equals b. 
And how do we measure that? Well, we use the beauty of calculus. The idea is that we're breaking up each of these pieces, right? And if I were to approximate the length of each of these pieces, then that would approximate the length of the curve. And as the pieces get smaller and smaller and smaller, the approximation gets closer and closer and closer to the actual path. So when I look at my arc length equation, L is equal to the integral from T equals A to B of the magnitude of R prime of T dt. Notice that this quantity in here is the speed right? If we're thinking of this as velocity vectors because r of t is our position. So really what I'm doing is I'm summing up a whole bunch of these speeds over a particular unit of time. In my head, this is an, I, I'm ignoring the formal proof. We can go through the formal proof um, in the text if you would like. I'll make a video for that if you are interested. But conceptually, what I'm thinking to myself is, what is distance? The distance traveled by this is going to be the speed at which it's traveling times time, which is exactly what's happening. I'm summing up the instantaneous speeds over a collection of times, and that gives me results with the total distance traveled. Let's see an example of this. So let's say that r of t is given by the function t sine of 2t cosine of 2t. And I want to find the length of the path from t equals 1 to t equals 4. Notice that this function is a modified helix, that it's progressing outward in a linear path along the x direction. And this is going to be my sketch of it. When t equals 0, I'm going to plot some points. When t equals 0, I start with an initial vector of 0 along the x-coordinate. The sine of 0 is 0 along the y-coordinate. And the cosine of 0 is 1. So I end up with 1 on the z-coordinate. And it's going to ravel forward, looping around the x-axis looking like a helix. So let's go ahead and co compute the length of this path. First, we know that we have to find r prime of t, which is the derivative of our function. The derivative of t is 1. The derivative of sine of 2t is cosine of 2t times 2 because of chain rule. So I get 2 times the cosine of 2t. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, but by chain rule I end up with negative 2 sine 2t. Two That's my derivative function. I need to find the magnitude of my derivative function, which is equal to the square root of the first component squared plus the second component, which is the cosine of 2t all squared, plus the third component, which is negative 2 sine 2t two squared. I can simplify this slightly. I'm going to square the first variable, and I get 1 squared is 1, plus 4 times cosine squared of 2t. Negative 2 squared is 4 times the sine squared of 2t. I'm going to factor out the 4. There's a 4 in front of both of these terms, and this is a trick that we'll use a couple of times. This is 1 plus 4 times cosine squared 2t plus sine squared of 2t, and parentheses. Look, this is the cosine squared plus sine squared is just equal to 1. So in this case, this whole term, this is the only trig identity that I have instantly memorized. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1, and because they have the same functional input. So what's 1 plus 4? 
I end up with square root of 5. Thus, my entire formula for my arc length is going to be the integral from t equals, in the problem I was taking the path from t equals 1 to t equals 4. So t equals 1 to t equals 4 of the magnitude of r prime of t, and this case is something easy, it's just square root 5 dt. When I integrate a constant, I end up with just square root of 5 times t evaluated from t equals 1 to 4. And my final answer is going to be 4 times the square root of 5 minus 1 times the square root of 5. And this is my final answer. If I wanted to plug it into a calculator, I could. Finally, we're going to talk briefly about arc length parameterizations. So on the lab, the lab that we worked on the first day of class, we looked at these two different functions. We had r1 of t was given by the function t comma 3t plus 2, and we saw that this traced out a line. It traced out a line in the xy plane. When t was equal to 0, it meant that our y component was equal to 2. And as t increased positively, we trudged along this line at constant speed, or we trudged backwards along this line at constant speed. We also looked at a different vector valued function that also traced out a line, but this line had variable speed. When t equals 0, I plug in 0 and I still get the vector here at 0, 2, but it moves very slowly when t values are close to 0 and very quickly along the line as t values get greater. This is my visual representation of what we saw in the lab. These are two different parameterizations of the same line. I'll write that down. Two different parameterizations. And that just means that they have the same path, but different speeds. Because this one moved at constant speed, and this one moved at some crazy variable speed. And I want to introduce a very special type of parameterization that's important for finding arc lengths. We say that an arc length parameterization is a special parameterization that has speed equal to 1. And you can verify this by seeing that the magnitude of the derivative is always equal to 1. And typically, when we write this very special parameterization, we write r of s rather than r of t. This s here stands for distance. So for example, if we were just going to look at the line from this example, I want to come up with an arc length parameterization for this line. We're close to that, finding arc length parameterization. That's our next topic. Um, here we had the line, ah, ah, too many papers. There we go. Um, so let's look at the line traced out by y equals 3x plus 2. So I'm just saying this is what the path looks like on the xy plane. x, y, we see that for this first parameterization, well, I want to make sure that when I travel along this parameterization, I travel along with a speed of exactly equal to 1. I'm going to start by looking at this parameterization and then modify this parameterization to have speed 1 because it had constant speed before. So let's find the speed of r1 of t. r1 of t, which is the function t comma 3t plus 2, I want to find the speed. Find ah, speed. So what is speed? First I have to find the derivative of r1 of t, and that's easy enough. The derivative of t is 1 and the derivative of 3t is 3, and so the magnitude of this derivative the magnitude of the velocity function is the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared. 
which is equal to the square root of 1 plus 9, which is equal to square root of 10. So in this parameterization, it's moving along at constant speed, but it's moving at speed square root 10. I don't want speed square root of 10, right? I want it to be square root of 10 times as fast as that. That's, that's square root of 10 times too fast. So instead of setting, of using this, I'm going to replace it with a new variable. I want my s to be equal to be t divided by the square root of 10. Why would this work? Hmm. This is not what I meant to say. I want t to be equal to s divided by the square root of n. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. What's going on? So in this old parameterization, my t parameterization is moving along at square root of 10 units per distance. So this is the same thing as saying that square root of 10 times t is going to be equal to the total amount of distance traveled. So one unit of time will give me out square root of 10 units of distance, right? One unit of time gives me square root 10 units of distance in my old parameterization. But I don't want that. I want one unit of time to give me one unit of distance. That's what an arc length parameterization does. So it means that if I replace this variable with this, I end up with a new arc length parameterization, r of s, given by, instead of t here, I'm going to replace my t variable with s divided by the square root of 10, and I'm going to re replace t by 3 times s divided by square root of 10 plus 2. This is an s, not a 5. And I claim that this is an arc length parameterization. I can leave it to you to check that if you find the derivative of this function and then the magnitude of the derivative of this function, it will give you a magnitude of a derivative of exactly one, meaning with this parameterization, I move one unit of distance for every unit of time along the path of my line.